The Supreme Court is hearing arguments today over President Biden's plan to forgive nearly half a trillion dollars of student debt. The White House says this plan could help 40 million Americans, while Republicans call it expensive, unfair, and illegal. Senior Washington reporter Devin Dwyer has more. The bid to block federal student loan forgiveness for millions of American graduates could hinge entirely on the state of Missouri. Anna Bain is one of nearly half a million Missourians who has debt relief on the line. I spend a lot of time worrying about um, how I'm going to pay that money back. The sophomore journalism major recently applied to have some of her $12,000 in student loans forgiven by the federal government. Why is it that you think that, that the government should pick up that tab? It is a fair point to raise. I think that everyone has a right to say how their taxes are being spent. I feel like taxes are for the greater good, and this is for the greater good. The U.S. Education Department last year, citing a need to protect the greater good during the pandemic, invoked emergency powers. This is a game changer. The agency offering to absolve as much as $20,000 of federal student loans for more than 40 million eligible borrowers. But the plan's $430 billion price tag didn't sit well with Republicans in six states, who saw it as a bailout exclusive to college students. It's unfair to people who paid off their loans. It's unfair to people who didn't take out loans. Missouri's then Attorney General Eric Schmidt sued to stop it. How is federal debt relief for almost half a million Missourians, how does that hurt Missouri? Isn't it good for Missouri? Well, I mean, it's adding to our debt, number one. I think the reason why this case is before the Supreme Court and why Missouri and the other states are ultimately going to win is because Missouri has a loan servicing organization called Mohila that derives revenue from interest. Mohila, or the Missouri Higher Education Loan Authority, is the nation's largest servicer of federal student loans with more than 5 million accounts totaling $148 billion. Missouri's new attorney general says forgiving those loans would mean less money for Mohila and in turn fewer benefits for Missouri. The court has identified it as a public entity that administers student loans and provides uh, college assistance programs for people across the state of Missouri. And so the state has an interest in it. He says the most direct financial interest is a state law requiring Mohila to pay $350 million to help fund improvements to state colleges and universities. Some of the money used for upgrades like this medical center in Columbia. But Mohila still owes $105 million more. They have not kept that up. And so to say, that that you have borrowers who, uh, you know, they need to pay what they owed. Well, Mohila does not pay what they owe. Missouri Congresswoman Cori Bush says the company um, is being used as a pawn. Mohila was created by the state, but they are not a part of the state. Mohila, which did not respond to a request for comment or an interview, is notably not challenging the Biden loan forgiveness plan. Some top conservative legal scholars have told the Supreme Court, while they don't like the debt cancellation plan, letting Missouri challenge it could set a dangerous precedent. If these states are granted standing here, it could lead to far broader abilities of the states who haul the federal government into court. A high stakes decision that hinges entirely on whether the justices believe debt relief for millions hurts Mohila, which in turn hurts Missouri. The soaring cost of higher education these days is so insane and so inaccessible for so many people. And I think that just leveling out the playing fields, I think that's really important. And Devin Dwyer joins me live from the Supreme Court now with more on this. Devin, how much is precedent going to come into play in this case? It's a big factor in this case, Diane. You know, the big question here is who can sue the federal government to challenge a policy they don't like? Uh, you can't just show up in court. The Supreme Court has said just because you don't like something or you disagree with it, think it's uh, expensive. And so the justices here are, are going to be weighing the standard for when you can actually come into court as a state and sue the federal government. The Biden administration, as you saw in our piece, uh, says that Missouri's injuries from the student debt cancellation plan are really speculative. They don't exist. They're too far removed from the state. If the Supreme Court sides with Missouri and says that those sort of far removed injuries are still sufficient, it could lower the bar, Diane, for other states to challenge the federal government. Uh, and that's something that the Solicitor General has said uh, could open the floodgates in a way to more state challenges to Biden administration policies, really any presidential policy, simply because they don't like it or disagree with it. Devin, what do the justices have to consider here, not only in this stage of the case, but also if it moves beyond this question of standing? 
Well, the big issue here, aside from standing, Diane, is just what authority the education department has to cancel nearly half a trillion dollars in federal student debt. The Biden administration uh, says a federal education law from 2003 gives the secretary explicit authority to waive loan repayment terms during a federal emergency, a national emergency. They said COVID, the pandemic, actually caused an emergency for people. Uh, so they had that authority. But the states and the attorney general of Missouri, as you saw in our piece there, strongly disagrees with that, says this is an overreach. It's not in the law and that Congress never intended when it wrote federal education law to give one person, the education secretary, the power uh, to spend half a trillion dollars uh, in, in federal debt. That could come up today as well uh, in addition to that question of standing, Diane. Now, Devin, President Biden made a campaign promise to forgive student debt. So what's the backup plan if the court rules against him? Yeah, you know, the, the Biden administration has said that they will go back to the drawing board if they lose this case. And I took a look. They do have other tools and authorities to waive repayment of federal student loans. In fact, one is in effect right now because of COVID. Uh, they've suspended repayment terms on some of these loans for several more months. Uh, so they can kind of do those smaller scale things. But any large scale cancellation of federal student debt is a long ways off if they lose this case. Of course, we have a divided Congress right now. Republicans are opposed to this. Uh, so a lot of people watching this this case and the decision uh, expected in June, Diane. So Devin, what happens if the court finds these states don't have standing to sue? Could we see another challenge to this debt forgiveness plan on different grounds? Yeah, we sure could. We could see somebody like Mohila, that loan authority, and there are several other loan servicers in the country who hold federal student loans. Those could be wiped off the books if the Biden plan goes forward. Those uh, entities, those companies would certainly have standing. They would be injured in some way by this plan. They could choose to sue. So far, they've been silent uh, in this case, leaving it to these states to challenge. You also have, Diane, today, two individual borrowers who said they were left out on the sidelines of this plan. So there's a chance that they could have standing here and bring this case forward as well. And we'll wait to see what sort of questions and tea leaves the justices give today. All right. Senior Washington reporter Devin Dwyer, thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.